If you are wanting to bring your car from New Zealand to Australia, you'll first need to obtain approval to do so. This approval comes from the Department of Infrastructure, Transport, Regional Development, and Communications, who processes these requests through their application portal called Rover. Please note, you have to apply for your approval through Rover on your own behalf even when you are using a car transportation service. If you don't receive approval before importing your car, it is considered a criminal offense and you can receive a penalty and or a prison sentence. Personally, we thought it was more of a hassle to take our cars with us and it was just more practical to sell our old cars and move to Australia. However, from my previous video about moving to Australia as a nurse, a lot of you have asked if it's possible to move your car from New Zealand to Australia. So the short answer is yes, but first, if we are just meeting, welcome to the Little Cup from New Zealand to Australia where we talk about moving abroad must knows. I am your host, Pinibining Veronica. If you are a first-time listener, I share my experience living overseas to help you prepare for your big move. So if you're moving to Australia and you want to plan better, please hit like and subscribe. Salamat po! So again, as a disclaimer, we didn't bring our cars with us. I have not undergone this process, but this is the information I gathered. So say you want to bring your car with you to Australia. Perhaps it has a sentimental value or it's a luxury car. Well, there are eight steps to follow. So step one is to conduct your research. So some questions to ask yourself would be, is this vehicle eligible to enter Australia? Which approval type should I apply for? What are the costs involved? So say shipping, storage, delivery, approval application, taxes, customs duties, cleaning for quarantine purposes, asbestos testing and removal, quarantine inspection costs, modification costs, state or territory registration, and insurance requirements. And then you can ask yourself, what are the time frames involved for getting approval and completing other necessary arrangements? What documents do I need? What does each government agency require? Do I need to use a broker? Will I have to have modifications done to meet national road vehicle standards? And what are the risks involved with importing a vehicle? Step 2. Apply for an approval to import a vehicle and you'll need to create an account in Rover, complete the online application form, and pay the application fee. So Rover provides a single integrated system for all approvals and activities under the road vehicle standards legislation, allowing you to submit and pay for an application, monitor the progress of your application, receive and respond to requests for information regarding your application, be notified of the decision outcome of your application. By the way, if you're enjoying this podcast, please hit subscribe and turn on your notification bell so you will know when I upload new podcasts just like this one. And if you want to support the channel, click that super thanks icon or simply buy me a coffee by clicking the link below. And that link is www.buymeacoffee.com backslash binibininver. Alternatively, a big thumbs up also goes a long way. Salamat po! Step 3. Receive approval to import a vehicle. You will receive an email with approval attached. The approval may contain conditions for the use of the vehicle. Step 4. Arrange shipping of a vehicle. Before shipping, ensure a vehicle is steam clean inside and outside to remove any materials that may pose as a quarantine risk. Before shipping, ensure any air conditioning gas is removed if necessary and arrange for asbestos testing and removal if necessary. Step 5. Get customs clearance. Lodge an import declaration, pay customs duty, pay goods and services tax or GST, pay luxury car tax if required. Um, for the luxury vehicle, I think the tax applies if the vehicle is worth over $71,000 and a purchase receipt will be required. Ensure, again, that there is no asbestos. Along the way, there will be government agencies that you'll have to get in touch with. Now, step 6. 
meet Australian quarantine requirements, you will have to lodge a quarantine entry with the Department of Agriculture, Fisheries and Forestry, arrange inspection appointment you or your broker may need to be present for this step and again if you find this podcast helpful please make sure to hit like and subscribe salamat po step seven meet approval conditions arrange for modification of vehicle if necessary conduct testing and develop evidence of compliance if required apply for entry on the register of approval vehicles if necessary and step Step number eight, register the vehicle. Apply to register the vehicle in the relevant state or territory if you intend using the vehicle on a public road. Now, if you're going to use a professional car transportation service, they'll be able to handle all the necessary logistics and oversee the shipping and custom regulations for you. However, you will still need to submit your rover application to receive approval to relocate your vehicle. After you have submitted your application, you can book your car transportation service with a trusted provider. Vehicle deregistration in New Zealand and re-registration in Australia will often be left to you. However, you can ask your transportation service for some assistance. You may also be required to provide your transportation provider with some relevant documentation including purchase receipts, record of any modifications, registration of ownership to clear shipping. For your reference, duty and GST applies for vehicles entering Australia for the first time. Returning Australian vehicles are generally granted an exemption, however, this is subject to customs approval. Depending on your specific needs, you can either arrange vehicle pickup and drop off for an additional cost or drop off your vehicle at the depot. You will be required to hand over your car in a clean condition which will meet Australian quarantine compliance and your vehicle transportation service may even require you to undergo specialized cleaning beforehand. Your fuel tank must be close to empty, less than 20% capacity in order to travel. You're also unable to store any personal items with your vehicle. Your chosen transportation provider may also complete a condition check on the vehicle at either end prior to shipping and on receiving. Your car will likely be shipped in a container with household goods to help provide a cheaper cost. Most moving experts do not recommend using a roll-on roll-off services as cars that travel on Roro ships tend to be more susceptible to damage and other issues. Some shipping lines have recently started to introduce requirements for fully electric cars like Tesla to be transported in a reefer temperature controlled container instead of a standard shipping container. This may come at an additional cost so it's best to specify if your vehicle is electric early on in the quote process. After your car has reached Australian shores, it will proceed through Australian customs. They may request a custom valuation to be done of your vehicle, which will be at your expense and can cost around 500 to 700 Australian dollars. From there, you can arrange for collection of your vehicle. Some food for thought. Shipping a car to Australia will require adequate planning and paperwork. Please don't wait until the last minute as there's a lot of steps involved. You'll also need to determine if your vehicle is eligible for shipping and prepare documents needed. You may need to budget generously for costs. There's application fee, fee for the transporting company, customs duty, and GST. The time it takes for your car to be relocated from New Zealand to Australia will depend on a lot of factors. It can take 60 business days for your rover application to be assessed and decided upon. You will then need to factor in custom clearance which can vary. Shipping times across the Tasman depends on weather conditions, demand, and your specific shipping company. So it's best to receive an estimate from your vehicle relocation company. Question of the day. Will you be shipping your car to Australia? Why or why not? Let me know in the comment section below. If you think this podcast is helpful, share it. Share it to your friends. And check out my other video about expenses overview when moving to Australia. As always, I wish you all the best with your journey and I hope you will be blessed. I'll see you soon. Bye!